So I guess this should start with a disclaimer. Um, the next story is going to be R-rated, for want of a better phrase. Um, so we're going to turn the volume up a little bit. And um, if you're under the age of 18, these things will come to you in time. Okay? Have patience. So this is an extract from the book, I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell, by Tucker Max. Um, feel free to go to www.tuckermax.com where you can read this and more. Um, hold on to your hats. The stories in this book are quite laugh out loud. Um, I encourage you to, to get the book, read the book, but also see the film. Um, it's fantastic and kept me amused through some very long flights. Enjoy. So this is a story called Tucker Tries Butt Sex. Hilarity does not ensue. Um, apparently it happened in the summer of 97. I spent the summer between my second and third years of college sucking on the parental teat in South Florida. It was the absolute prime of my do-anything-to-get-laid phase. Recently freed from a four-year long-distance relationship that began in high school, I wanted nothing more than to have sex with as many girls as possible. Most of the things I did that summer are not story-worthy. You can only tell the same, I got drunk on Dom and fuck this hottie so many times before it gets annoying. That summer I experienced every random sex situation that a 20-year-old can imagine. Fucking on the beach, getting head from random girls in club bathrooms, sleeping with two or three different girls in a day, getting so drunk I passed out during sex, getting arrested for having fellatio in the pool at the Delano, blah, blah, blah. Jesus. What does it say about how fucked up my life is that I don't consider these stories to be extraordinary anymore? Anyway, while most of my stories from that summer may not be extraordinary for me, there is one very notable exception. I was seeing one girl, Jamie, about twice a week. She was a fresh arrival in South Beach, having moved there five months ago from Maine as a 19-year-old with a modeling contract. We met through a mutual friend who befriended her while they were modeling. Five weeks and lots of sex later, she thought we were dating. I knew better, but she was way too hot to bother correcting her assumption. The ex-girlfriend of four years I previously spoke about was very sexually conservative. It was missionary in the dark and then straight to sleep, with maybe a blowjob on the weekends if she'd had a few glasses of wine with dinner. It was a high school relationship. I didn't know any better. After four years of this, I was ready to experience all the things I'd missed out on, when I wasn't cheating on her, of course. But sex, known in the biz as anal, was one of these unknowns, and I decided that I wanted to try it. Jamie was the perfect partner, very hot and very sweet, but, more importantly, very naive and very open to suggestion. She was reluctant at first, not understanding why we just couldn't keep having normal sex, so I had to employ my persuasive powers. Jamie. But I've never done it. Me. I've never done it either. It can be our thing. Jamie, but I don't know if I'll like it. Tucker, you won't have to worry about getting pregnant. But I like normal sex. Everyone's doing anal. It's the in thing. But I don't know. It seems weird. It's the preferred method in Europe, especially with the runway models. Don't you want to do runways in Europe? After a few weeks of this, she finally consented. Though she agreed to let me put my penis in a small hole, she extracted a promise in return. Okay, we can try anal sex, but I want it to be special and romantic. You have to take me out to a nice place, not the Forge or Tantra, not one of your father's restaurants, and it has to be a weekend night, not a Monday, and you have to keep taking me out on weekends. I'm tired of being your Monday night girl. I made reservations for the next Friday at Tantra. Aside from being insanely expensive, Tantra is famous for having grass floors. Really, they put a new sod every week. They also advertise their food as aphrodisiac cuisine. Yes, at that point in my life, I thought these things worked. Thanks to my father's connections, I got us a corner booth in the grass room. She was quite impressed. I ordered like it was the last supper. No expense was spared. Two hundred and ten bottles of Merlot, veal rack, stone crabs, the Tantra love platter... It was lavish and decadent. I was 21, stupid, and wanted to fuck Jamie in the butt. I wasn't about to let a $400 tab get in the way. 
By the time we left Tantra, this girl had doe eyes that would have made Bambi look like a heroin chic, CK model. She couldn't have been more in love with me. The entire drive back to my place, she was rubbing my crotch, telling me how badly she wanted me to fuck her, how hot I made her, etc, etc. We get back to my place and I close her off before we even get in the door. We collapse on the bed and start fucking. Normal vaginal sex at first, just like always. Now, what she didn't know, and what I've not told you yet, was that I had a surprise waiting for her. Aside. Before I tell you what the surprise was, let me make this clear. As I stand right now, I am a bad person. At 21, I was possibly the worst person in existence. I had no regard for the feelings of others. I was narcissistic, self-absorbed to the point of psychotic delusion, and I saw other people only as a means for my happiness and not as humans worthy of respect and consideration. I have no excuse for what I did. It was wrong, and I regret it. Even though I normally revel in my outlandish behavior, sometimes even I cross the line. And this is one of those situations. But of course, I'm still going to write about it. This was going to be my first time foraging in the ass forest, and I wanted to have a reminder of my trip, a memento I could carry with me for the rest of my life. So I decided to film us. I planned this beforehand, but I was afraid she would decline. So instead of being mature and discussing it with Jamie, I just made the executive decision to get it on camera, without telling her. That alone is pretty bad, but instead of just setting up a hidden camera, I got my friend to hide in my closet and film it. No, really, I know that I will burn in hell. At this point, I'm just hoping that my life can serve as a warning to others. I left my door unlocked, and we arranged it so that around midnight, my friend would go over to my place and wait until my car pulled in, and then run into the closet and get the camera ready. The top of the closet door was a French shutter, so it was easy to move the slats and give him a decent camera shot through the closed door. By the time Jamie and I got to the bed, I was so drunk I had forgotten he was filming us. And of course, she had no idea he was there. After a few minutes of standard sex, she kind of stopped and said, all serious, in a, in a best seductive soap opera voice, I'm ready. I quickly flipped her over and grabbed a brand new bottle of Astro Glide I had on my bedside table. A week prior, after Jamie consented to butt sex, I realized that I didn't have any idea how to do it. How exactly do you fuck a girl in the ass? Luckily, I had the world's best anal sex informational source at my disposal. The gay waiter. I consulted several gay waiters who worked at one of my father's restaurants about the mechanics of butt sex, and each one recommended Astroglide as a lubricant of choice. Much to my dismay, I learned that spitting on your dick is not enough lube for butt sex. Stupid lying porn films. The other important piece of advice I remembered... Make sure you use enough, because if this is her first time, she'll be especially tight, and it might hurt her. Use enough to really loosen her up, and then go slow until she gets used to it, and then it's smooth sailing from there. Well, since some is good, more is better, right? At 21, this seemed logical. I opened the cap, crammed the bottle top into her asshole, and squeezed. I probably emptied half the four ounces of Astroglide into her. I have since learned from homosexuals that a four-ounce bottle usually lasts them about six months. So, yeah, I overdid it. But Tucker Max wasn't done, or no. After depositing enough grease in her to run a Formula One race car, I dumped half of what remained onto my cock and balls, really wanting to lube up because I didn't want her to be uncomfortable. Really, consider my thought process. I was going to fuck her in the butt and film it without her consent, yet I was truly concerned about her personal comfort. Sometimes the contradictions of my personality amuse even me. Predictably, I slid in with ease. She was a little tense at first, but with an Exxon Valdez size load spilled into a poop chute, she quickly loosened up and got into it. I liked it also. It had a different feel to it. Not as good as for general sex. A little grainy, kind of tight, but still very nice. Before I knew it, I was fucking her like the apocalypse was imminent, bearing it to the hilt with impunity. After a few minutes, I was ready to come. My urgency was expressed in my tempo, and I began really jackhammering her. As the excitement got the best of me, I pulled out too far, and my dick came out of her ass. I kind of scrambled to grab my dick and put it back in, so I could finish off inside her, but before I could even get a hold of it and put it back in her ass, I heard a faint <laughs> sound, and felt something wet and warm hit my crotch. 
It was dark in the room, and I wasn't smart or sober enough to leave the lights on for the camera. So, after I looked down, it took me a few seconds to realise that my dick, balls and groin area were covered in a viscous black liquid. I stopped moving and stared at my strangely coloured crotch for a good five seconds, completely confused until I realised what had happened. Did you... did you just... shit on my dick? I reached down to touch the liquid faeces, still in complete and utter disbelief that this girl shot explosive diarrhoea on my penis, when, without warning, the smell hit me. I have a very sensitive nose, and I have never been more repulsed by a smell in my life. The combination of synthetic astroglide and the rancid stench of raw fecal matter came together to turn my stomach, which was full of seafood, veal, and wine, completely over. I tried to hold it back. I really did everything I could to stop myself, but there are certain physical reactions that are beyond conscious control. Before I knew what I was doing, it just came out. I vomited all over her ass, into her crack, into her asshole, on her ass cheeks, on the small of her back, everywhere. She turned her head and said, Tucker, what are you doing? Saw me vomiting on her, screamed, Oh my God! And immediately joined me. Watching her throw up on my bed made me vomit even more. Her vomiting over my bed, me vomiting on her ass. The next step was almost inevitable. I heard a loud crash first and turned to see my friend break through the shutters and rip the closet door off as he, the video camera, and the door tumbled out of the closet and crashed onto the floor next to us. Blah! The memory of the next two seconds span where all three of us were vomiting at once is permanently seared into my brain. I have never heard anything like that symphony of sickness. I think the crowning moment was when my eyes locked with Jamie's, and I saw her moment of realisation, and then her quick shift from shock and surprise to complete and irre- irreparable anger. Between bouts of hurling, she flipped out, Oh my God! You felt this, you asshole! How could you... I thought you loved me! Oh my God! I let you fuck me in the ass! She tried to stand up, slipped on the huge puddle of backflow astroglide on the bed, and fell into both my pile and her pile of vomit, covering her body and hair in vomit, shit, and anal lubricant. She flailed on the bed for a second, grabbed the top sheet, wrapped it around herself, and started running at my place, still naked and retching. My dick covered in shit and lube, I followed her as far as the front door. The last contact I ever had with her is the image I witnessed of her in a dead sprint, A shit, vomit, and grease-stained sheet stuck to her body, running from my apartment. Postscript. The camera used was one of those ancient, fragile ones that filmed onto a VHS tape, and when my friend crashed out of the closet, the tape recorder and tape broke. It didn't occur to us that the tape records the images magnetically, and we could take the actual tape itself and get someone to put it in another holster until after we'd thrown it out. I know it seems stupid now, and believe me, I kick myself about it every day. But you should have seen the apartment afterwards. The tape was not a high priority. Astroglide, shit and vomit covered everything. I had to rent one of those steam cleaners, buy a new mattress, and I still lost my deposit. It was impossible to get the smell out. The next month was like living in a sewer. Every girl I brought back to my place after that refused to stay there and some even refused to sleep with me anywhere because of how bad my place smelled. What I never found out, and I still want to know, is how the girl got home. I never heard from her again, and the mutual friend who introduced us called her, but didn't get her calls returned. I never heard anything about her from her again, even though she left her clothes and ID at my place. She wore a light, tight dress out that night and didn't bring a purse or money with her. Can you picture the scene? What did she do? Hop in a taxi? wave down a passing car, get on a bus. She lived at least 30 miles away. There is no way she walked home. It perplexes me to this day. I'm hoping she reads this. Maybe then I'll find out how she got home.